Hello and welcome to today's yoga class. Today is a yin class and we're going to be stretching into the neck and upper back. We're going to start with our legs. So come have a seat, a comfortable seat, and we're going to get ready for pigeon. And there's two variations that I'll explain. And just sink into your breath here. Inhale deep and a deep exhale. Um, I'm going to show you uh, the modification for the next yin posture, especially if you're new to yin or new to yoga. So stay in your toe stand, but we will be doing a pigeon next. And there's the option to do a pigeon in supine position in which we bring one knee up, crossing the other leg over, and just bring that right leg in towards the chest for a pigeon. This is great if your back is a little bit sore. An excellent modification. Otherwise, we're going to be transitioning slowly into our pigeon by first coming out of our toe stand by bringing our hands down, tabletop position, and then walk your hands a little bit further. We're going to transition via downward facing dog again. So back up into that down dog, nice and slow. Starting with our right leg. Right leg comes all the way up. And exhale, bring the right knee towards the right wrist. And then rotate the right ankle towards the left wrist. It might just stay here. See if you can get it up a little bit further, if it's comfortable. And then slowly start to sink in. So maybe drawing the left leg back sinking both hips downwards, noticing if your hips are level or if you're kind of off kilter a little bit and try to just adjust that. You might need to pad your back knee. Inhale, nice and long. And on your exhale, start to bend at the hips. Nice flat back. And do what feels good for you for this yin posture. We'll be holding it for a few minutes, so you can simply stay here. Some, for some, it might feel good to come all the way down, maybe using a block to support the forehead, maybe coming down onto the hands. Bring awareness to the right hip and just try and lower it a little bit more, centered with the left hip. Again, if you're feeling any intense pain, come out of the pose a bit, or don't feel any different in taking supine pigeon on your back. Again, breathing. Anytime your mind starts to wander about future planning, worries, anything that stresses you out, just remind yourself that you're taking this time to have for yourself to come back to your breath and just Pressing pause on the day in a sense. Coming back to the breath again and again.
attention back to the breath. Breathing in deeply and breathing out deeply. Notice while we were in this pigeon and stay in your pigeon where your mind went. Did it stay on the breath or did it go to other places? Even focusing on your body sensations is a great anchor. Focusing on that sensation in the right hip, maybe the left knee. That could be a great way to connect with here and now. So take a deep inhale as you slowly lift up. And if you are lucky and chose to be in supine, you can just simply sprawl out into Shavasana before we move into the other side. For the rest of us, we're slowly coming out of the pose. So let's just go into tabletop for a second. And with your right leg, we're just going to do a little fire hydrant kind of motion or drawing big circles, really oiling up that hip joint. Yin yoga is a lot like braces and to make any kind of changes, positive changes in your body, it takes a lot of time and patience, which is why we're holding the poses longer. All right, press yourself up slowly into Downward Facing Dog. You're all doing wonderful. Thank you again for being here today. Walk it out if you need to. Feel how nice that is to be out of the pose, even though for some of us, I love pigeon pose. A nice juicy stretch, but it always feels nice to transition out of it too. Inhale, bring the left heel up. And exhale, bring the left knee to the left wrist. And see if the left ankle can come towards the right wrist as much as is in your practice. And by the way, you can keep your back toe tucked if that feels more supportive for your knee. Sometimes for me it does. Stay here, nice long back. If you're supine, again, pressing the left knee into your chest. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, let's journey down together wherever is comfortable for you or stay up. Using those comfy pillows you have or comfy blocks or just your body come into a nice yin posture. Again, challenge yourself by connecting with the breath, the body sensations every time your mind starts to wander, anytime you have strong emotions, unless it's pain. If you're feeling a lot of pain because of your body, come out of it. Listen to those emotions. But really not ignoring anything, just letting it come and go. Welcoming any emotions you feel with love and kindness. And then simply come back to the breath. Again, make sure the left hip isn't too high up. Focus on just seeing if it can come down a little bit, maybe back a little bit. Relaxing the upper back, relaxing the shoulders, and relaxing everywhere you can. Because there's a lot of body parts, a lot of muscles that are working, but there's a lot that are able to relax and don't need to hold tension. A ton in your face, for example. So just breathe.
couple more breaths here. Come back to the breath gently. Deep inhale. Deep exhale. As you inhale, focus on being calm and peaceful. So inhale, peace. Exhale, maybe the thought of love. Love towards yourself and others. Inhale, peace. And exhale, love. Or soften. And the next inhale, slowly come out. So bring yourself back up. Going slowly back into tabletop. Awesome work. Nice and gently. You'll notice that your legs are maybe moving a little bit more sluggish as the blood and circulation comes back to them. And just do a little fire hydrant, a little, well not little, but big circles. One way, and the other way with your left hip. Drawing those circles with the knee. And then, we're slowly going to bring the legs out to the side and set up for Dandasana. So staff pose, legs out in front. And your back is nice and long. My apologies for my phone. Sometimes it has a mind of its own. So just inhale, lengthen the spine. We're going to inhale this time, bring our hands up overhead, and exhale, cactus arms, just open up the chest a little bit, and stay here. So, really intense pose, many muscles in our body engaged, the legs rooted down, maybe you look up, and exhale, fold, so bending at the hips, Nice long back, your arms might only be here, that's fine, or maybe we fold, releasing the head down towards the knees, doesn't need to touch. Uh, two variations here, you can stay with your legs together, which is great, or you can bring a wide-legged forward fold. My hips are extremely tight in my anatomy, so my wide-legged bends, I'm not going very far, so you can feel free to bend your knees. Again, the first option is just, just stay with your legs long, or a bend in your knees. So take whatever variation your body is craving right now if you want more more stretch into the hips, keep your legs wide-legged. Otherwise, you can keep them together for most of the stretch being in the lower back and releasing the neck and the head. Feel free to use props to connect yourself to the earth.
focus back to your breath, slowing and lengthening the inhale and exhale. And gently, with kindness, bring yourself back up. And we're going to take a seat of our choice. Sukhasana, cross-legged, maybe hero's pose, as we transition slowly into our final poses, but we still have this transition, so I'm going to stay in Virasana, hero's pose, with a block underneath my hips. You can choose any seat that you feel comfortable. We're just going to do a little bit of more upper body work in this transition. So getting ready for eagle arms, so inhale, arms come up. And as you exhale, cross your arms and come into eagle arms. It doesn't matter which arm is on top, just take a note what arm is on top so that we, when we take it to the other side, that you know. And in this pose, we're just going to practice a little bit of movement. So as we inhale, our elbows just come up just a few millimeters barely an inch, and as we exhale, they come down like an ocean wave that's super gentle. Really your body is moving to the breath, nothing is forced. And we're just going to stay here for about 10 breaths. Nice work. Inhale deeply. Exhale fully. On your next inhale, unravel. Reach your hands up to the sky. On your exhale, we're going to cactus the arms like we did before. A little back bend, countering the forward folds that we've been doing. Bring the elbows back just a little bit if you can, feeling that pinch in the back. Look up to the sky, feel that gentle back bend, nothing intense. And on your next exhale, bring your hands back to the legs, roll your shoulders. And I hope we remembered which hand was on top. We're going to do the eagle arms again. If you forgot which arm was on top, just, uh, just think about if it feels like you did that already. So inhale, hands come up. And exhale, other hand on top. For me, it's the right hand. And it might stay here. You might be able to give that little high five. And then just get your elbows parallel with the earth. And close your eyes to go inwards like the ocean on your inhale, bringing your elbows just slightly up. And as you exhale, bringing them slightly down. So really, you are listening, you are moving with your body's natural cycle of inhale and exhale. Nothing is forced.
One more deep inhale. Hold it at the top. And exhale, release. Move your upper body if you need to. Any cool shoulder dance moves. And getting ready for our almost final pose. So, well, it is your final pose if you want it to be. So we're going to come down, and this is like our Shavasana, so we're going to hang out here for about five minutes. We're coming into supported fish, so you will need a pillow. And because I did say you don't need a prop, you can do it without, so your supported fish will simply be more of a Shavasana. But if you do have a pillow or a prop, really great so that we can open up the chest, bring the shoulders back, just as we've spent a lot of time in today's class um, working in our upper back. So a pillow works fine. You can always use uh, blocks, and your blocks just form kind of a T-shape so that you do have a pillow for your head. And we're going to just slowly come into this, and again, trial and error until it feels nice. The first support pillow or block is going to come just in between the shoulder blades. So just experiment. And then your head comes to a pillow or another block. And just listen, like, does this feel good or is this really not fun for me? And if that's the case, use a pillow. A pillow is going to be a lot softer and gentler. Or a rolled up towel, rolled up blanket. If it feels okay, stay feeling that opening in the shoulders and chest to intensify just a bit. We're going to bring the hands out to either side. And we're going to open the hips one last time so we can stay here with our legs extended or we can bring our hips open by coming into Baddha Konasana by opening into bound angle, soles of the feet together. Close your eyes. If I had it, I'd put a, a face cloth or something over my eyes, so or turn off the overhead light so that it's a little bit easier for your eyes, so that you can let loose, get rid of the tension in your eyelids, around the eyes. And we're going to hang out here for a few minutes, so just breathe. Be as comfortable as you can be. Nice deep inhales and exhales. to focus on your breath. Stay in supported fish. Or if you would like to come into a Shavasana by getting rid of your props and just lying on your back, arms by your side, that's fine too. Otherwise, this here and now is our Shavasana. Taking a couple minutes, breathing deeply.
then we are going to end our practice here lying down. Feel free to stay here for a bit longer if you have the time. No annoying YouTube video will pop up next. It should be quiet. I will be coming out to the computer if you have any questions. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining me in today's